Hi, my name is Michael Idaraji, and today we're going to talk about Paul Warfield Tibets, who was the pilot of the B-29 uh, bomber that um, dropped the first atomic uranium-powered bomb upon Hiroshima. And uh, we're going to go over different aspects of his life and more focusing on not the uh, horrors of the event, but really is man uh, innocent of their actions? If you, if you were to ask Paul Warfield Tibets on many occasions, every time they asked him for some sort of emotional response or regrets, he has no regrets. And, and he said that he feels the same today as he did back then, uh, with no emotions about the event then and now. So does this reflect on anything uh, in regards to the world of our actions that though they might be seemingly um, like we're doing the righteous thing uh, on paper, but then there's a deeper spiritual uh, dile dilemma, trauma, or judgment from God within our actions. In this video, you're also going to see that you can't escape. And um, as uh, Jesus said to the Pharisees, woe unto you, on uh, Matthew 23, 27, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye are likened to whitewashed sepulchers, which outwardly indeed do appear beautiful and within are full uh, of dead men, uh, full of bones of dead men and of all incontinence. So also outwardly indeed do appear to men righteous and within ye are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. A lot of people go on their life, they're thinking that there is no judgment here and with that they're fully vetted to do whatever they want. Well, in the case of Paul Warfield Tibets, uh, we're going to go over some of the low-hanging fruit, and um, this is information that you've probably heard before. He was the uh, pilot and orchestrated the delivery of the uh, uh, atomic bomb to Hiroshima. Uh, he's been credited as a war hero. He's been credited as a man single-handedly uh, ending World War II with the bombing of Hiroshima and then later the second uh, bomb on Nagasaki, uh, the first one being on the 6th of August, 1945, and the Nagasaki bomb was dropped on the 9th of um, August, just three days later. Um, and here's what we're going to find out. So let's, let's do some details and um, some of the things, and we'll see where we go. Um, one of the things about uh, the, the whole business of, of uh, Paul Warfield Tibets is that he was the pilot of the B-29 bomber. And um, one thing that's very interesting about um, this bomber is that he named this particular plane, which everybody is probably familiar with, Nola Gay. And that's the name of the plane. So he named it after his mother. Uh, his words uh, pretty much summed up that he knew that this was going to become a very famous name, and he didn't want to make, he didn't want to give the plane a name that might be used in something else. Like he didn't want to call this the Enterprise bomb, because like Enterprise was used on many other vehicles over the time. So he wanted this to be a special plane, calling it. Enola Gay. Low hanging fruit. When we look at the name Enola Gay, it's a very, very unique name. But at the same time, well, what does that mean? Well, Enola Gay is the name of his mother. So he named the plane after his mother. His mother at first was very surprised, but then she was very giddy that the plane was named after her. Prior to her being uh, Enola Gay Tibets, uh, B B E T S, her other her ma her maiden name was Haggard, 
And that might be interesting later. So, the maiden name of Enola Gay Haggard uh, is the mother of Paul Warfield Tibets. Now, history has a lot of very pivotal, pivotal moments. And when you have pivotal moments, you have pivotal people that have done something in either direction, or whether it be good or evil, or could be uh, a group of people. But then you ask yourself, well, are they doing the right? Did they do something good? And that's, um, it's very questionable, because when you, when you hear the narrative that uh, was given during the day, they tell you, yes, what Paul Warfield Tibet's did was very good. It saved American lives. It saved Japanese lives. That's a very funny mantra that you hear it today, just as you did back then in 1945. The justification for horrific actions are always by, well, we're saving more lives. We're saving more lives. We don't really want to touch upon that right now. We're just going to touch upon uh, Paul Tibet's. So, we have an airplane named Enola Gay. It's named after his mother. Now, I'm going to leave the airplane and pull to bets for a second and focus on something of the um, pre-genital stage of development. And this is when a child is between three and five years old. You will find this in other videos of mine. This is the time... It's in his chart as well. This is the time when uh, from three to five is called a pregenital stage. This is the time when the development is done primarily with the opposite sex parent. And if the opposite sex parent is not successfully engaged with the child, what the child does is that it heads uh, to the head more in control. I'm right, you're wrong grandiosity um, and you get a image of the person like this where they have a massive head structure and they're trying to disassociate themselves from their body interestingly enough when we talk about Paul Warfield Tibet's he has mentioned several times uh, in in uh, many uh, interviews that he has no problems with the morality of what he did um, in an interview called Hiroshima uh, reminiscing Hiroshima he actually said that it's their tough luck that they were there and that if he associated himself with the morality he wouldn't be able to be a bomber pilot which is you know makes sense you know you've got to be able to dissociate yourself but what if his actions in the bombing of Hiroshima is also displaying a inner turmoil of his own self and that's what we're really talking about does it make Paul Warfield Tibet's different than like let's say uh, somebody else no he's in the same position that uh, that a lot of people are in I'm not gonna give numbers because I really don't know but let's just say a greater part of the population or a great part of the population that has an issue between the three and the five years of age, five and seven years of age, has this inflated ego and rigidity. And um, we can see this in other people as well. And we're going to we'll talk about that in a little bit. But what usually ends up happening is the person has to deassociate themselves from their body. See, the emotions are down there where the heart is, and the head is up there. Interestingly, Paul Warfield Tibet's flies an airplane. So clearly, he is pretty high up there in the sky. So, what does that mean? Well, let's talk about it. If you have a problem with the pregenital stage, it's between three and five years old. If you have a problem with rigidity, it's between five and seven. So, if we look at the airplane, we have Enola Gay. He actually put his mother, his name, in the airplane. So then how did Enola Gay, as you can see this is the nose art, and this is Paul Warfield Tibet's 
on the day of the bombing, and this is before he took off from Timian Island, this picture was taken. And this is just part of the picture. So, um, how did Enola Gay get her name? Well, she got her name from her father. And her father, at the time of her birth, was reading a book. And the name of that book is Enola, comma, or Her Fatal Mistake. So, the name of the book that was named, that, uh, that, was, that, that is the naming of Enola Gay, Enola, comma, or Her Fatal Mistake. This is the name that Enola Gay's father had given her, Enola. Uh, interestingly enough, that the book itself has a very curious passage or poem in the beginning of the book, and that goes, uh, well, it's probably too hard to read, O fatal day, O day of sorrow, it was no trouble she could borrow, but in the future she could see the clouds of infelicity. This is a very ominous uh, paragraph telling, foretelling a future. Um, so this has to be greater than um, something that would happen as coincidence. Another thing that's very interesting is Enola, Enola backwards is alone. So now the book itself actually says how Enola is alone and how alone that she, she is. So the book says this. This is not just a play on words. The book itself describes that she was alone and, uh, and, and makes that statement. So now, let's write it again. Alone and gay. Now, why is that important? I don't know. We'll get to it in a few minutes. But um, I can say this, though. When you have the massive head structure and you have your body down here, then, and this is also where humanity is, you are alone. We'll come back to that. Back to the airplane. So now we know where the plane got its name. And then we know where Enola got her name. So if you could see, we have the father, name the daughter, and then we have the son. We're starting to get into a male, female, male, generational uh, you know, we're going from the father to the daughter to the son. So we're definitely in the uh, pregenital or genital stage of trauma here because of other things which we're going to get to. So now, if we have Enola Gay being the mother, then where is the son? Because the this is this is metal now. Well, oddly enough, the name of the atomic bomb that was dropped is called Little Boy. That's the name of the atomic bomb. So now we have the mother who drops the son. This is the trauma that causes the pregenital stage uh, psychopathy. We have abandonment issues. So there's emotional problems here and a great disconnect until you get to the head. The head structure now has to create a downward force not to feel its body. And you can't find a greater downward force than being high in the sky and dropping a bomb upon people that happen to be mostly non-combatants. 
a lot of people that we talk that would talk about um, the dropping of the bomb of Hiroshima, they would always try and say, well, they're you know this is payback for Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor was a military facility, and uh, granted, a lot of people died, and it was an unfortunate, sad day. However, uh, the, the the number count of people that died was nowhere near what was killed in uh, Hiroshima. And secondly, Hiroshima was mostly non-combatants. And that's a very big difference. Now, again, uh, Paul Warfield Tibet's probably learned all this uh, later in time, and he has no problems with morality because he was carrying forward his duty and doing what he was supposed to do. However, was he aware that by naming the plane his mother, that he is the little boy? And if you look at uh, this photo that was in the beginning uh, that I had here, it has a picture of Paul Warfield Tibet in front of, on the plane, and you can find this in videos as well. And he looks like a kid looking out the window of a car waving at his mother. This is not an accident. And this is not something that is hard to find. A uh, little boy was not made, named by um, Paul or Field Tibets. That was named by a Los Alamos, um, uh, one of the people from Los Alamos who actually named the bomb after uh, a character named Wilmer, Wilmer, interesting that you see, if you look at this phonetically, you can actually see Will and me in this um, word. Uh, Wilmer was the character from a Humphrey Bogart movie, um, The Maltese Falcon. And Wilmer had a very interesting exchange with someone named Gutman. Gutman in the movie was uh, kind of intimidating Wilmer. And he said to him, Well, Wilmer, I'm sorry indeed to lose you, but what I want you to know, I couldn't be fonder of you if you were my own son. Well, if you lose a son, it is possible to get another. There's only one Maltese Falcon. When you're young, you simply don't understand these things. So now the Maltese Falcon and Wilmer and Paul Warfield Tibet's kind of have a little bit going on in common here. But the tragedy is, is that people are glorifying uh, a great distortion, a great distortion in Paul Warfield Tibet's, who actions that he was not conscious of ended up displaying his entire family dysfunction in a grand theater of the world. And uh, I'm very surprised that I uh, have not seen any videos or anyone make a connection that by him naming the plane, he is the abandoned little boy. And um, in this case, Will Murr. The, the, if you look at the character of Wilmer in um, the Maltese Falcon, and this is the Maltese Falcon movie in 1941, not the older one, you'll find it really interesting that uh, one of the other uh, curious items in there is that Humphrey Bogart calls him a gunsel, and uh, this is actually a gun-fired um, uh, firing mechanism or primary mechanism is actually like a, a gun shooting across the front of the bomb which detonates it. And the Nagasaki bomb, which is also the fat man taken from the same movie, um, is a different type of uh, firing. 
and it's a different type of bond. This is plutonium and this is uranium. So when you look at Enola Gay, you're looking at a son who was um, abandoned by his mother. Now, abandonment does not mean that uh, that all the time that the son has to uh, be left at a curbside or, or they just flee the house. But you can actually be inside a house and be brought up and feel a sense of abandonment. And that would normally come from the rigidity. And uh, we know Paul had tremendous rigidity. He would say, he said on uh, one video that he was like a cold fish, that uh, you couldn't get any emotion out of him. He was very regimented. There were times when they asked him about um, how does he feel about what happened, and he would go into the timing of the event instead of going into feelings. But if you're going to be describing timing instead of feelings, the curious part is that your heart is your timekeeper. So when someone talks about feelings, they're usually making reference to the heart. But if you're severed from your head and your torso with the inflated ego, then the closest you're going to come to understanding the function of feeling would be to use time, timing, as your uh, basis of understanding or com comprehending feelings and emotion. So growing up in the household of Paul Warfield Tibets, it could have been very frozen. It could have been very um, abandonment. And is Paul Warfield Tibets the guy that uh, we're just going to pick on? No. He could be the guy next door to you. He could be the guy who owns a corporation who dumps uh, poison products inside the waterways. He could be uh, like a Donald Trump. Donald Trump displays a lot of the very similar characteristics of he is very high up in the air and humanity is down here. Um, Benito Mussolini, another Another actor from uh, World War, uh, another player in the gigantic theater of World War II, and and him too as well. This is the, this is a trait shared by many people, and you know once there's death involved, that somebody is suppressing emotion, and they need to create or be part of death to suppress that emotion. Because they can't feel what is going on here. They don't want to feel this. So to not feel it, they must create a downward force. And being that we're talking about the death of so many people, there can't be a greater understanding of a downward force than dropping the bomb on mostly non-combatants. And then... You know, your justification would be, we're saving lives, we're saving lives. That's not true either. I mean, remember, they dropped the bomb on uh, Japan that was beaten. And then August 6th, they dropped it. And in Japan, in three days, they didn't surrender. And um, you'll also find out that uh, the Russians came into the war, declared war upon Japan on the 8th of August. So on the 6th, the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. On the 8th, the, the Russians entered and uh, said that they're going to be uh, at war with uh, Japan. And on the 9th, they hastily dropped that second bomb. And they did that so that they could be part of the process of Japan's rebuilding. They did not want the Soviets to be there. They did not want um, uh, the Russians or the Soviets didn't have any part in Japan. So to ensure that, they wanted to make sure that they um, finished up the war as soon as possible. And, um, and note that that's why the Nagasaki mission had a lot of flaws, because to, 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 to rush this event, you're, you're taking a lot of chances, and really the motivation to rush it had nothing to do with winning the war. And um, I'll have another video where we'll talk about lives and wars and nuclear bombs and, and uh, how one of the greatest fabrications 
is that war is a deterrent to nuclear, I mean, nuclear bombs is a deterrent to war, which is furthest from the truth. So now, when you are considering that the inflated ego is up here and the body's down there, the sexuality of the body is this part of the body, not up here. So when you're looking at Enola gay, it is really alone and gay. And spiritually, why alone and gay is so important is because homosexuality in the physical sense is a representation of what God considers homosexuality in the spiritual sense. In the spiritual sense, uh, man with man and woman with woman, God is saying that man is trying to reproduce himself without God. And that's the problem. This all has to do with God. Whether you can see it now or not, if you look at some of my other videos, if you look at uh, the pregenital stage and how uh, psychopathy is formed, you'll understand that this has everything to do with God. Because by, by having an inflated ego, you have a... A warped sense of sexuality. Now, am I saying that Paul Warfield Tibet was homosexual? No. However, in God's kingdom, if you if you are in the inflated head, inflated ego, uh, not in God's kingdom, but in the world, if you have an inflated head, inflated ego, then you must cons you must do some sort of downward force not to feel your body, and that includes death. So, God's spirit is inside the torso. So, when you're severing your torso from your head with downward violence, you are alone and you are gay. And um, again, this is not um, directed at people that are homosexuals. That has not, that's not in view. We're talking about spiritually what it means. Because the reproductive part of the body is in the torso. It is not in the head. And we know from, again, Paul Warfield Tibet has said on numerous occasions that he has no feelings, I mean, he has no emotions from the day that he dropped the bomb until uh, the, the date of that other interview, which was probably 2007, uh, towards what happened. And he said he would do it again if he had to. He was more preoccupied with getting the mission done. So, if people think that you're going to escape God's judgment, you're mistaken. Because he, Paul Warfield Tibets, named the plane his mother's name. That makes Paul Warfield Tibets the little boy. The little boy that was dropped from the mother while he was, uh, while he was growing up. The little boy that was abandoned. The little boy that could have been in the same room with the mother, but still totally disconnected from her. And this is, the, this is how his life had to open up so that he could fulfill who he is. Just like uh, you could see the...